Are we here at the Benjamin Banneker Museum uh, in Ellicott City, Maryland to talk about social justice issues. One of the struggles that Benjamin Banneker had was to be seen as a sentient human being uh, during the time of slavery as a black man. And I, I see parallels with his struggle uh, that play out in the context of uh, African American literature. Because I think on some level, black writers are still trying to be seen as equal in the canon. Um, I mean, what, what do you think about the health of black literature? Black literature? Um, I think, for the most part, uh, black poetry is very healthy. You know, you have a lot of poets being published on a regular basis. Um, the fiction writers um, are, tend to have a harder time these days because uh, the focus is more on the commercial or the ur what they call the urban type of um, fiction. So when you have people like a John, Hen uh, John Edgar Wideman uh, or you know, other writers um, having trouble getting their manuscripts sold, like John, John A. Williams or whatever, mm -hmm. Uh, that becomes a big, a big problem because these are writers that have been very important coming up in uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, and now these major um, black writers cannot cannot get any attention, cannot get any uh, any any play from the publishing houses. So that could be a problem, I would uh, say. Uh, I read an <coughs> article recently that had insights that literary literary agents were offering about uh, what they like for writers to send them. And I'm not going to mention their names. But one of the things that I noticed was they were all white. And these the were, agents? The agents were white. And uh, these were high-powered agents. And they were talking about They want the memoirs writers. from the ghetto? <laughs> none of them were talking about memoirs from the ghetto. No. Oh, okay. And none of them were talking about black writers. What were they speaking about? They were speaking about the books that uh, they wish they had uh, picked up to give to editors and the books that they missed. They were talking about what kinds of books grip them. And most of them used that same cliche about wanting to find material that makes them miss a subway stop. You know, that's the kind of book that they the, want. The, the thing is, that in, in American publishing, Back in, let's say, you know, the 50s or before, you know, even before the 50s, you really had, it was the editor's domain. The editor went out, sought really talented writers, and let's say they didn't, you know, they weren't, a, that, that first book or that second book wasn't a, a, a great seller, right? Mm -hmm. But they took time with their writers, you know? They knew that one day it's going to pick up because they have talent. Now it's all market-driven. So instead of the editor determining what's going to get published or having a, a, a major influence on what gets published, they go right to the marketing people and say, mm -hmm. okay, can this sell in the marketplace? Right. That's, that's a problem. But that's the thing. We're here to talk about social justice, but I think it's related to that. What struck me again about this, not so much about what they were looking for in the books, was that black people didn't exist. It was like a day of but it's, absence it's, it's, among <laughs> it's these the same in, editors, in, in right? It's the same in Hollywood, you right. know? You can't get a, a serious black film produced or sold. You know, you have to have buffoonery. You have to have these, 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 um, these films that, that, that undermine your own dignity and pride and integrity. So, you know, you have the wealth of black literature that has been produced throughout the, um, the decades and the century, and then you don't see those being turned into films. So how do you deal with that in terms of your writing? In terms of my writing, I just write um, from, you know, from what I feel. And I don't try to compromise my writing to fit anything. And I find the right publishing houses, and they mainly are you know, independent presses, that will allow me that um, leeway to, to publish what I need to publish. And it, it's not market driven, even though you know, you do have to go out there and, and push these, these books and stuff, you know, and get people to read them. We used the word um, selling a couple of times, and that was clear in this article uh, that is of primary concern. 
Um, you've published 16 books, been published in over 90 anthologies. You've won Patterson Prize for young people, for and, yeah. uh, I and I, Bob Marley. Um, but in all of that work, selling doesn't strike me as something that's been uppermost uh, on your mind. Is that true? Or I mean, I mean, what is well, your... Well, because I didn't come in, I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, become an artist for that reason. You know, I became an artist because I fell in love with the art form. You know, I fell in love with wanting to be a writer from reading. I fell in love with poetry from writing poetry and then reading poetry, you know, and seriously getting into it. So, and I knew that because um, of the type of writing that I do, because my writing tends to be uh, politically charged or socially driven, that there's a, there's a chance that, you know, I might upset some forces. <laughs> so, you might upset some people. Yeah, so, you know, I can't, I didn't, you know, have that idea that, oh, these people are going to reject me or this and that. I just said, well, I got to move in the way in which I can get my work out. But, but without you, compromising that much. But you know, some people in the canon might tell you that politics, that political themes don't have any place in art. What do you think about that? Well, that's, so, that's a, a tired, tired argument because even when you're not being so-called political or blatantly political, it's political. You know, silence equals death, as they say, you know. I mean, your silence is saying something. Hmm. When you ignore something, when you stick your head in the sand and ignore uh, what's happening, and you know, that's just as political as just bearing witness. Mm. <laughs> you know, so I don't even buy into those arguments. That's silly. What, what do you see as uh, the role of the artist then? The role of the artist is to make art. You know, however they make it. You know, um, art is supposed to be a, a beautiful thing. And there should be some truth that emanates from that. You Amen. Know? Even when you, have, you, even when your art is reflecting some ugly, you know, or some horrible thing, it is a work of art. You, this is a creation. You are making something. You are constructing something. But it should connect with people, because we're we're about uh, dealing with the human condition in all aspects of art, not just writing. Um, we're we're filming this about. A week after hurricanes and earthquakes in D.C. And I love the people and my heart goes out to them elsewhere. But uh, um, what's happening around here has been very much on my mind. And recently the, uh, the memorial for Dr. King was unveiled. And uh, I read an art article that week uh, by uh, Dr. West. And that's actually, Cornell West? Yeah, Cornell in, in the in the Times, <coughs> New York Times, where he... He was saying Dr. King would, would weep in his grave. I oh, believe. of course. If he saw the situation in this country, the economic situation. I mean, when he was gunned down, he was leading a, a poor people's campaign and a workers march with the sanitation workers. I mean, you, he was a fighter for the working class folks, for the poor people. You know, he, it wasn't just about racial justice and equality. You know, it was beyond that. You know, even Malcolm X. It was all about, you know, figuring out the class dynamics of capitalist America and how race plays into that. How race has been constructed to divide black and white, to divide black and brown, to divide yellow or whatever, all these ridiculous colors, you know what I mean? But to, to, to divide those that are uh, oppressed, you know? Those that share more interest in anything than the power stru you know, structure. Those at the top of the power structure. So, of course, he would be totally uh, enraged. He would be getting arrested every week. Have you, uh, what, what do you think about the, the memorial? Have you, have you had a chance to see it? I haven't seen it. Oh, I saw it on, on, on um, images on the internet, on, in the news or whatever. It's, it's majestic. Mm. Um, there was some controversy that it, a Chinese um, person sculpted it and they didn't go with an African-American artist. Um, and then the second uh, level of controversy was lodged by uh, Dr. Maya Angelou where um, she criticized the, the quote that they used from Dr. King and it was taken out of context, the quote itself, 
and they didn't put the full quote and it made her argument was that it made um dr king out to seem egomaniacal mm -hmm. you know it was all about him and i am a um a drum major for justice or whatever when he was saying something totally different you know he was he was dispelling those type of titles um you know uh aimed at him pointed at him and he was trying to basically um say look forget about all that stuff but what about the work that we have to do now in terms of equality but what does equality mean equality is not a racial thing solely Equality is about who gets to eat. Everyone should be able to get to eat. And he's coming from a whole, you know, a Christian theology, you know, following the true ideas that Jesus put out there, right. you know? So it, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that you don't have a problem with the, the, the honoring him with the symbol. But no, with, it's important. With the, with the, but the problem is with... Uh, the, the lack of substance on issues of social justice that uh, Dr. King fought for that it yeah. would seem as if uh, I think people are not following the his, not, um, uh, the path that, he, to. that he was walking. Uh, it seems like also a risk that we take as artists, as people, we don't know what people are going to say about us when we go, if they're going to spell our names correctly on it. Yeah, spell my name T-O-N-I all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what would you like your legacy to be? My legacy? Mm -hmm. Nothing that, that serious. Did I try to do a good job as, a, as an artist, as a person? Did I stood up for something? 